Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel where we're doing another speed drawing which uh, has taken a... I know I do a lot of these at the moment, it's because I'm do still doing them over on Twitch on Thursdays and some Fridays at the moment, depends on when the miniature painting is working or not because oh boy is the camera set uh, temperamental on that one. So I'm today going to be talking to you about the character that is in on your screen today which is She-Hulk um, who is the favorite superhero character of one of my patrons Invader Zim. So I'm gonna I did uh, this is actually the third time of doing the voiceover so I t tend to do these voiceovers a lot um, at where I talk and then I go wait that was a really bad subject and probably really bad for the channel so let's skip it and that was one of them because I, I kind of gave feminine rage way too much uh, uh, right shall we say um, so let's continue with let's just talk about She-Hulk herself because you know She-Hulk or Jennifer Susan Walters is a really great character obviously created by Stan Lee and John Buscema uh, she first appear in the, appeared sorry, in the Savage She-Hulk in November of 1979, so she's older than me, which is great. She's uh, a lawyer who, after an injury, received an emergency blood transfusion from her co cousin, Bruce Banner, and acquired a milder version of his Hulk condition, which is why she can remain as She-Hulk and not like want to throw cars at the judge. Though, I'm pretty sure she does um, in a couple of comics, because there is also a version, uh, there's a couple of comics as well, where she gets really, really angry, uh, proper angry, and turns into the full She-Hulk version of Hulk, where she just like rampages around and hurts people, and I think she kills a couple of the Avengers, but um, w Wanda was involved in one of those, which was really fun. Uh, Wanda's been involved in a lot of stuff though, a lot of bad stuff, bless her. Um, and that's where the children came from, funny enough, I believe, that comic book, so uh, that comic book has a lot to answer for. Uh, also, I did kind of like it in the TV show where it was an accidental thing where she accidentally got some of his blood and it shows that it's enough as long as you've got like a genetic similarity to each other, which cousin is enough of that, that it can still have an effect. So it means technically, I suppose, that um, Bruce could be a blood donor and not transfer it to anybody else unless they were like of his family, which also isn't good because that means if any of his family do get sick that he's gonna get stuck or they're gonna get stuck with possibly being turned into a form of the Hulk though that kind of makes uh, another allegory for werewolfism really or lycanthropy that's the word not werewolfism lycanthropy because uh, you know that's like passed through bloodlines as well originally well it depends where you're going wrong folklore but we're, go we're running off track here Right, because she's got the milder version, as we said, that's why she becomes a large, powerful, green-hued version of herself. But unlike Banner, she retains her personality, with, in particular, the majority of her intelligence and her emotional control. Get it, guys? She has more emotional control than Bruce Banner. That was the point that was trying to be made in the TV series. Congratulations, you failed if you hated that scene. Sorry, you failed. You failed your emotional intelligence check. Learn to live with that or fix it. Okay, good. Like Hulk, however, she's very susceptible to outbursts of anger and she does become much stronger when she's enraged. Um, however, originally it wasn't a permanent transformation so she could flip between the two, but it does become permanent and kind of uh, like Deadpool, she breaks the fourth wall for humorous effect and running gags. Which is great, because she actually did this before Deadpool, so everyone's saying, oh, they stole that from Deadpool. No, Deadpool stole it from She-Hulk. She-Hulk has been a member of the Avengers, the Fantastic Four, Heroes for Hire, the Defenders, Fantastic Force, and S.H.I.E.L.D. She's a highly skilled lawyer who also became a superhero by accident, so she frequently leverages her legal and personal experience to serve as legal counsel to various superheroes and other metahumans, which must make it really fucking difficult for judges, because, you know, technically, doesn't she have vested interests so she shouldn't be able to do that? Or does she not? I'm not sure how that would work in real life. Any lawyers who actually would understand this, please comment down below, I would, I would be super duper interested. So She-Hulk was one of the last 
original superheroes that Stan Lee created uh, for Marvel Comics um, until his return uh, in 1992. So she is an original, original character, and my gosh, that makes it means she's really kind of important, doesn't it? Um, the reason behind the character's creation had to do with the success of The Incredible Hulk from 1977 to 1982 and the Bionic Woman on television series, which were both from Universal Television. Marvel was afraid that the show's ex executives might suddenly introduce a female version of the Hulk because they'd already done that with the $6 million man and they didn't want that to happen. So Marvel decided to publish their own version of such characters to make sure that if a similar one showed up in the t television series, Marvel would own the rights. So essentially, it was a rights of fight off, a copyright fight, shall we say. Her early Avengers appearances continued the running gag about her having car troubles. Uh, She-Hulk also occasionally made guest appearances in The Incredible Hulk, of course, because why wouldn't she? Her appearance in The Avengers 233, which was July of 1983, was drawn by John Bryn, who would later become strongly associated with this character, though not in the original. And at the conclusion of the first Secret Wars miniseries, She-Hulk joins the Fantastic Four. And during She-Hulk's tenure with the Fantastic Four, she appeared in Marvel Graphic Novel 16, The Aladdin Effect, Marvel Graphic Novel Novel 17, Revenge of the Living Monolith, and Marvel Graphic Number 18, The Sensational She-Hulk. All three graphic novels appeared in 1985, and the last, Number 18, appearing in November of 1985, which was written and illustrated by the then Fantastic Four slash artist Dot John Brin, which explains why he is strongly associated with that character. She finally regained her own solo series in 1989 with the sensational She-Hulk, which uh, maintained the original graphic novel's title, which is pretty cool, and ran for 60 issues. Uh, issues 1 to 8, 31 to 46, 48 and 50 were written and drawn by Bryn. So, um, Bryn's She-Hulk stories satirised comic books and introduced She-Hulk's awareness that she is a comic book character. She's a pretty cool character. I I really love her. I, I she's just amazing. Uh, she's so great, and it, it's just nice to have this kind of character. And I do think that the TV show was maligned for all the wrong reasons. I actually really enjoy watching it. I challenge all of you haters to go and watch it now, as if it was a movie, and come back and tell me how you feel. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Do cake. Take care, I hope you enjoyed this, have fun, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.